Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mandy, the Handmade Homeschooler, and today we are going to be doing a plan with me session. So I'm gonna take you along at my kitchen table and I'm gonna show you exactly how I plan out a week of homeschool subjects for one of my children and we're going to fill it in in here and I'm gonna show you my number one tip for making this quick and easy. And I'm talking about like 10 minutes per kid. So if it's your first time here, I wanna say welcome. Make sure that you hit the like and the subscribe button because it really does help me and my channel out. And down below in the description box, I will put a link to this planner if you want to check it out. It is from the Mardell company. I am not associated or affiliated with them. I just like their planner and I've actually been using it since our first year of homeschooling. So I've been using this planner for six years now and it's just my favorite one out there. So I will put a link down below for that and I'll also have a link down below for our Facebook group that is free to you. It is my personal Facebook group where you can talk about homeschooling, ask questions, or just meet some friends. Okay, so I wanna say my number one tip it for homeschool planning, and you will see how I actually implement this in the video, is not to put in every single little assignment that your child's gonna be doing for every single day. Instead, write the concept instead. So you're gonna see how I put this in action, but let's just say that they're gonna be learning verbs throughout the entire week. They're gonna be learning um, action verbs and helping verbs, put that instead of language arts book, page 16, A through Z, whatever, you know. Don't worry about putting all of those small details in there unless it is something that you absolutely have to do. Most of the time, the only thing that's really required if you have to have some kind of written record is just an overview of what you're doing. So there's three things that I try to make sure that I have every single week in my planner marked. Number one is the concept, not the actual specific assignments, but the concept that they're learning that week. Number two, any quizzes or tests that I always put a little star with so I make sure that I don't miss it. And number three, any materials that I may need to get, which is perfect for that little notes column off to the far right that I'll show you in the video. So come along with me to my kitchen table and I will show you how I do this and it's really quick, easy, and painless. So here's the planner that I use to do all of my lesson planning in and this one is the Simple Plan by Mardell. This is the one that you guys saw on my channel last year and the year before. And I like this one because it has a lot of features that work best for me. And if you're looking for a planner like this, there are several links down below in the description box where you can go check that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip to this week, which is right here. We are at the beginning of February. And the first thing that I do is I write all the subjects that we do down the first column, which is pretty simple. So you guys can see that a little close up here. So the subjects go this way and then the days of the week go across. There are in each box six lines. Since I have two kids, I just split it up with a line and with a ruler and a pen and half the box is for one child and half of the box is for the other child. So the next thing that I do is I grab all of the books and I do this typically one child and one subject at a time because it just makes it a little bit easier. As far as planning, I typically only plan out about one week in advance. So I do planning every Saturday or Sunday, just depending on what's going on in our world and today is Saturday and I am getting ready to plan for Monday. So I have a fresh planner here with no boxes filled in and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill in some of these boxes and I will show you guys kind of the, the thought process and how I keep this really simple and really quick without writing absolutely everything that is inside of the lesson plan books because I don't think that that's really needed. Okay, so the first subject we have is structure and style. Now as far as planning for me, I'm just going to turn over to the syllabus and every syllabus has 
what you're studying for the week as well as the literature suggestions on in one column. And we are getting ready to start week five, which is here. He's reading The Emperor and the Soup. He's going to be learning new band words. And there is a new book. And we don't have this book, but it's only for one week, so I don't think it's actually necessary. However, the following week, this box here says the book is for three weeks, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and order this book here. So for this week, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take the actual subject that he's going to be learning. Uh, he's gonna be learning verbs and band words, and I'm just going to write that in the language arts box. Okay, so now this subject is done. So I just wrote all the way across because we're gonna be doing this all throughout the week. IEW, band words and strong verb, the emperor and the soup. And now we can go ahead and move to the next subject. For reading and literature, we are doing a Becca right now. So I have a Becca five and I'm just gonna open that up. And we are going to be on number 36 tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and check out what's happening for 36. So in his literature unit, he's going to be learning new vocabulary words. He's going to be reading his Beyond the Horizon book still. He's got a couple of skill sheets throughout the week. And then a vocabulary quiz on Friday. So the quiz portions are something that I, I like to make sure that I have down. So on the next line down in his section, I'm going to put in that he has a vocabulary quiz on Friday. So I usually just put a little star right there. So that would be this line. Okay, so I have that. And I have here that he has a new vocabulary list. And now for spelling, I know that he has a spelling test Monday, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And now I have language arts filled out. So here we go, there is his section of language arts here. So let's move to the next section, which is history. So let's fill in the history box. Here is my history planner. And we are going to be on day five this Monday. So we are going to have a quiz. So again, that's something I need to remember. So I'm going to grab my pen and I'm going to make a star and put that he has quiz one on that day. So the next thing that we're going to do is we have a new map that I need to get out. So I'm going to put in map. So I remember to do that. And actually I'm gonna do that as soon as I'm done with this video. Now the actual classwork pieces, I don't typically fill in because I don't really need to do that. But what I like to do instead of doing the actual page numbers and worksheets and putting those in individually, I'd like to instead put in test quizzes and the general concepts of what they're going to be learning in that subject during the week. So he's going to be going into unit one, which is Asia. So I'm going to put that in. So Asia unit one, and then he's doing a map study. So I'm gonna put in map study for Wednesday. And then on Friday, he has a quiz as well. So Friday, so if we follow along the lines here, that would be here. Okay, so now we have history done. Let's move along to science. For science, we are using Apologia's Zoology 3. And science is always a good one to look ahead for just in case you have experiments or anything like that that you wanna set up for, that's a good day to do that. So let's take a look. Okay, so he's gonna be reading the first day. 
He's got a map activity and a notebook activity. And then Friday he has an experiment. So let's fill that in. So the concept that he's going to be learning is, it looks like he's going into mammals. So we're going to just write mammals. And then just kind of an overview of what he's doing. And now science is done. So I basically just wrote an overview. So I have that he's reading pages here, that he's learning about mammals starting on Tuesday, and that he's doing math, tracking, several activities, and then we have an experiment on Friday, which is over here. And then, just to be sure that I have everything, I'm going to check and see what that experiment is. So it tells us it's on page 30. So let's open to page 30. Okay, so it says I'm going to need a science speculation sheet, a box of lemon gelatin. Okay, I don't have that, so I'm going to put that on my grocery list. I need sugar, hot water, red food coloring, two bowls, and serving cups or dishes. So the only thing that I need to get is a box of lemon gelatin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write myself a note over in this section. So in the Mardell Planner, you have this section here for notes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write science, lemon, jello. And I'm going to put that on my list of things to get at the grocery. Okay, so that is science. So, so far, this has only been 15 minutes and I'm almost done with my first student. The last thing that we really have here for him is math. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that we do teaching textbooks for math. So there's not really a whole lot for me to plan. So basically what I do for teaching textbooks, because there's nothing really for me to put in here, is I basically put for both kids teaching textbooks. And if I ever have to show proof or something like that, they know that it's here and then I can show them, okay, so we use teaching textbooks and it's on the computer and then log in to see their grades. And I always have some kind of, I make some kind of printout every year of their grades and assignments as well. So there is a record of that, but I just usually put that in here and one thing you can do to kind of just make things look a little pretty, I like to use washi tape in my planners because I think it's really, it's really nice and my planner is for me, so. You can get this really inexpensive. I bought four rolls of this for I think five or six dollars on Amazon. And it's like this metallic shiny botanical piece. And there's the big four subjects. So we have language arts, history, science, and math. Now the only thing left that I have is Bible, which is a subject that their dad teaches. So I typically don't do any planning for this, but at the end of the week, I'll fill that in with whatever they did just to have a record of it. And then down here at the bottom is the electives box. And this is typically reserved for my high schooler because he's the one who has electives. Although my youngest has been taking a foreign language. So I am gonna go ahead and fill that out because I wanna keep track that he is doing foreign language. So he is learning Greek and Latin. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And this is where I would also put in art and music. And I believe we're gonna be doing art on Friday this week. So I'm gonna put art here. And I don't believe I have any music for this week. So he doesn't have any electives 
other than foreign language on Wednesday. It is a little hard to write on an angle here, so bear with me, my handwriting is not the cleanest, but I did want to show you guys how I do this. So Tuesday, he doesn't have any electives, and then Thursday, he also doesn't have any electives. I like to break these up a little bit so it doesn't seem so overwhelming. And the days that they don't have any subjects, I just put one of those pretty pieces of washi tape on there and that lets me know that there's nothing going on that day or if it's for teaching textbooks. I have these in here for teaching textbooks and for days that we just don't have like a specific subject. So just to show you up close, this is what it looks like. And this is only half here. So this is only my youngest son. And what I'm gonna do next after I shut off the camera is I'm going to go in and fill in everything for my oldest son. And so all of these boxes up here on the top parts will be filled in for him. And that is how I do my lesson planning. So total, this took 20 minutes and typically it wouldn't, wouldn't have taken me nearly as long because I wouldn't be explaining it via camera. So this typically pro would take me about 10 minutes per child. So this is a relatively easy way for you to do some lesson planning. All right, guys, that is the end of this video. If you made it to this point, tell me down below in the comments how far out in advance do you plan? Do you do a week, a month? Do you do every single day? How far do you go? I only did it once, but my very first year of homeschooling, I got really adventurous. And as soon as I got my Mardell planner, I actually filled in the entire school year. I will never do that again, <laughs> but I did it one time and it was, um, I won't do it again. Let's just put it that way. I won't ever do that again. But I am a paper and pen type of girl, so I absolutely love lesson planning. It's actually a, something that I enjoy doing, and it actually makes the week go by a, much more smoothly because I can see and already know what's going to happen, and that way I'm much more prepared. So lesson planning does have its benefits. Um, yeah, so let me know down below how far out in advance do you do your planning? I only do week to week just to kind of keep things fresh in my mind and just in case something comes up or somebody gets sick, I don't have to go in and redo a whole bunch of pages or something. All right, guys, that is it. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Happy homeschooling.